Okay, it's set time again for the next part, which I said I was going to do. And then that will be floating the uh, uh, Granville Bay and to figure out where the uh, seats are going to go. Uh, I've got my tank of water behind me, and I've got my plasticized, well, actually just a plain old, I think this might be saran wrap. No, it's a plastic bag that I've salvaged and glued to the inside. So I've got uh, my boat, my water tank, and I've got my my three people and I've got one that's actually supersized for American standards and the other two are pretty close along behind so I want to make certain that these things that the boat has enough uh, flotation for a pretty hefty load so the boat is floating and it, it sets pretty good in the in the water so uh, let me reset up and then we'll go in and I'll get in behind here and start playing around with it. I've uh, already done this uh, several months ago so I know what the outcome is going to be and I already have my marks in there but we'll go along with, a, uh, with what I've done with my other boats. Uh, a lot of this has come about after I uh, boats that I had built earlier like the 8-foot uh, hut in the hatch and the uh, Laura Bay and those uh, I just, uh, I mean, a boat looks like a boat, and this boat's going to float like a boat, but uh, where you put the seats has a great amount of uh, uh, inf influence on how a boat rides when you have people in it. And then on the eight, like I said before, the eight foot nut hatch, I had to change the seat side from side to side to four and a half, like I did later on the pudgy design. So, uh, and then on the uh, Owen P pod, uh, the seat. Uh, when you have two people, the uh, rower has to move to the forward seat because on a double ender you don't have a lot of uh, uh, flotation there, not like on a pram. And the same with the Granville Bay, there's not a lot of you know, flotation uh, surface area in the back. Uh, so it's going to be kind of like a double ender, but not quite. Uh, so let me reset up and we'll go ahead and do this now. Okay, one of the things I always try to do is I start out with my uh, single rower first and that's going to be my supersized guy so I know I can't put him up here in the front because then the bow is going to set down and I can't put him too far in the back because then the stern is going to squat so I like to, I have kind of an idea that, that the, around the beam is going to be probably pretty close to right on the mark and right there uh, setting into the water the, uh, the V in the stern is just just touching the water now with one person and I'm still only riding on the bottom two panels up in the front. So we've got our one person there. Let's see what happens when we throw in a second person. Okay, she, she squats down and you can see how the bow came up out of the water. We'll do that again. You can see how she sets down. Can't have them too far back in the uh, very stern because then she really, she really squats down. So I'm going to pick a point right there. And it's still, still a little heavy, so I'm going to take my supersized roar and stick him up front. And I'm more or less back in trim again. So let me move this guy back a little bit, see what happens, and then this guy back a little bit. So. I'm somewhat in trim there, so this is what it's going to be like on the double ender O and P uh, when you have two people, the one in the stern, or uh, the one in the, the rower in the middle is going to have to move to the forward seat, so I'm going to have to have a set of oarlocks in the midpoint and then one up forward here. Well, let's go back and add a third person, which is another American sized passenger, and we're back into to level trim again. So as I said, I've already got these points figured out before, so I know now from measuring that the aft point is two and a half inches from the uh, very stern of the uh, at the top and five and three quarters and I know I've got that back a little bit more don't I? Original. 
five and a half for the middle seat, and eight and a half for the bow seat. So I know those positions. Now the only thing that will affect the center seat uh, position is when I, uh, I still have one more test to do, and I think I'll make that another uh, another video. Uh, I need to do my uh, center of uh, lateral resistance and my uh, um, um, the hell they call the uh, oh well where you do the sail and the whole masses and so uh, to figure out where the dagger board's going to be. So um, I'll think of that. There'll be a little caption in the bottom here when I'm doing this. Uh, um, we'll go ahead and do that on the next one. So this is pretty much it for this boat. Uh, let me. I'll go ahead and I guess we can move this around so you can see the uh, the resting point. This is with three people on it. And again with three people. And then let's go with just a single person. And that's how she's going to ride with a single. And then let's just stir. So with a, a supersized person, and I'm talking somebody that's in the 240-250 range, uh, she's going to set fairly fairly high out of the water. Of course, you got 12 foot and you got a fairly long water line, but uh, she's got a lot of a lot of shape to the hole, and that's going to be the fun thing that we're going to, when I get done laying out the boat and cutting out the panels and wiring them up that first time I get my awe moment when the hull is all wired up and I can see what the she's going to look like. Uh, so I guess that will be it for this, this little segment. That's basically how I uh, float my boats and figure out where the uh, seats go. Uh, the next thing coming up, it depends on maybe I've got a few minutes. I'll see how long this one runs. Uh, I'll throw in the uh, lateral resistance and set a center of effort on the sails and the uh, lateral resistance on the hull. So uh, that'll be enough for this.